Hello all you freedom-loving people. Welcome to another episode of Front Page. I'm your host, Scott Cameron Goulet. At 74 years old, former White House Chief Economic Advisor Peter Navarro has been ordered to report to a federal prison in Florida by March 19th, disregarding his appeal. President Trump confirmed his meeting with Elon Musk. President Trump also met with Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, and Orban says that President Trump can end the war in Ukraine. The Boeing whistleblower John Barnett was found dead on the same day that he was expected to appear in court. And Tesla and iPhone are experiencing blowback in China from the CCP, similar to the treatment that Huawei was shown on American soil. Okay, let's get into it. Two of America's biggest tech giants, Apple and Tesla, have recently conquered the Chinese market and gained a foothold, but these two U.S. companies are experiencing a rift in their China strategy. Their market share in sales were down this month. Both companies have resorted to discounting in China to maintain their appeal. The iPhone is suffering from declining sales in China. In January, Apple also offered a rare discount on the iPhone 15 in China. The move was seen as unusual given that Apple hasn't cut the price of its latest iPhone in years. Apple sales in China have plummeted and technical performance reasons are not the most critical factor. The deepest reason is the CCP's active strategy of selectively decoupling from the West. In September of last year, the Communist Party of China had extended the ban on iPhone use to government-backed organizations and state-owned enterprises. Some Chinese organizations have begun instructing their employees not to bring their iPhone to work. At the end of 2023, numerous government departments and CCP state-owned enterprises in at least eight provinces had instructed their employees to start using domestic brands of cell phones. In addition to the Chinese Communist Party's campaign to restrict the use of iPhones by government employees, rival Huawei launched a domestic smartphone last year that was backed by a public media campaign and strong covert support from the CCP authorities. This has led to a huge increase in Huawei sales at the domestic level. If we don't sanction Huawei here in the U.S. for its technology, then the fear is that Apple may decline even more. Sales of Apple's iPhone 15 in China were lower than those of previous models. This prompted some analysts to lower their revenue estimates for Apple. Recently, the Goldman Sachs Group removed Apple from the best buy list. So far in 2024, Apple's stock price has fallen more than 12%. Apple's market capitalization has evaporated by more than $300 billion this year. The company's total value has not only been surpassed by Microsoft, but the distance is widening. Tesla is also being suppressed by the CCP. Citing security concerns, the Chinese government has imposed increasing restrictions on Tesla in China. Since last year, more government agencies, local government agencies, highway operators, and even cultural and convention centers have restricted access to Tesla vehicles. Previously, such restrictions were generally limited to military bases. These restrictions have undoubtedly dampened the enthusiasm of Chinese consumers to buy Teslas. Tesla's Chinese rival BYD surpassed Tesla in global sales in the last quarter of 2023. According to official Chinese data, in the first two months of this year, Tesla's market share of China's new energy vehicle sales, including electric and hybrid vehicles, slipped to 6.6% from 7.9% in the same period last year. Tesla offered a sizable discount to Chinese consumers earlier this month in order to boost sales in China. The company's profits in China will also take a hit this year as Tesla loses the preferential 15% tax rate that many local competitors still enjoy. The growing challenges that these two companies face in China have raised concerns on Wall Street. Those challenges have caused Tesla's shares to fall 28%, making them the worst performers among the big seven tech stocks. Former White House Chief Economic Advisor Peter Navarro has been ordered to report to a federal prison in Florida by March 19th to begin serving a four-month sentence 
for two counts of contempt of Congress for which he was convicted. Navarro's lawyers confirmed the news in a court document that was filed Sunday evening. Navarro, who was 74 years old, was the director of President Trump's White House Trade Council. In February of 2022, the House January 6th Select Committee subpoenaed him, but he refused to comply, citing executive privilege. Two months later, the House of Representatives held him in contempt of court and the Department of Justice subsequently filed criminal charges against him. Last month, Judge Amit Mehta of the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia, which is hearing the case, denied Navarro's request to stay out of jail pending his appeal. The judge ordered Navarro to report to prison. Navarro has appealed to the Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit for the District of Columbia, seeking a reversal of the original conviction and a stay of execution of his sentence. In court papers that were filed on Sunday, Navarro's attorneys reiterated that the Federal Appeals Court should hold the sentence in abeyance while Navarro appeals. Navarro is the second senior Trump advisor to be charged with contempt of Congress after former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon. Bannon was sentenced to four months in prison, but he remains free pending his appeal. President Trump confirmed on Monday that he had recently met with Elon Musk. However, President Trump said he was unsure whether the billionaire would support his reelection bid. During a CNBC interview, President Trump said that he and Musk are friendly with each other. He said, look, I've been friendly with him over the years. I've helped him when I was president. I helped him. I've liked him. According to a report last week by CNBC, President Trump and his allies want Musk to speak at the Republican convention in July. However, President Trump acknowledged that he and Musk don't agree on everything. President Trump said, we obviously have opposing views on a minor subject called electric cars. I'm all for electric cars, but you have to have all the alternatives also. Since acquiring X in 2022, Musk has restored the accounts of several prominent conservatives, including President Trump. We've heard that Musk voted for Biden in 2020, but he voted Republican in the 2022 midterm elections, and Musk has said that he will do the same in 2024. Attorneys for President Trump have filed a motion to exclude certain evidence from his criminal case in New York. In New York, President Trump is set to go to trial on March 25th. New York Judge Juan Merchan gave prosecutors until March 13th to respond and he entered a new order requiring parties to get court approval for future filings. So President Trump's defense attorneys responded that the March 25th trial should be postponed until SCOTUS issues a decision regarding presidential immunity. The defense also argued that prosecutors with Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg's office shouldn't be able to use evidence from President Trump's time in office. A March 7th court filing, which was made public in a redacted form on March 11th reads, the court must preclude the people from offering evidence at trial of President Trump's official acts as the commander in chief. Prosecutors have argued that they should be allowed to present evidence of a pressure campaign that President Trump allegedly initiated in 2018 against Michael Cohen. The defense described it as fictitious. So what is this evidence? Cohen was previously President Trump's personal lawyer and an executive in the Trump organization. However, Cohen later became a vocal critic of President Trump and he made several public claims that led to two investigations. Cohen claimed that President Trump inflated his net worth to obtain better business deals. This led to the investigation by New York Attorney General Letitia James. Cohen also claimed that then-candidate Donald Trump asked him to pay an adult actress who allegedly had an affair with Donald Trump in order to prevent negative press during the 2016 campaign. Bragg's investigation resulted in an indictment charging President Trump only for falsifying business documents. However, Bragg's statements in court filings frame the case as about election integrity. The prosecutor's court filings indicate that they will use President Trump's public statements and Twitter posts from 2017 and 2018 as evidence that he pressured Cohen into silence. 
President Trump's public statements include Twitter posts about Cohen refusing to break in order to obtain a plea deal. Cohen was still President Trump's personal attorney at the time. President Trump had given media statements refuting claims that he used campaign money to quash the news story about Stormy Daniels. The motion by President Trump's attorneys reads that the statements would have been made in President Trump's official capacity as the nation's chief executive. So the attorneys asked the court to prohibit it. They also argued that the prosecutors were vague about what statements they wanted to use. Trump attorneys said that the defense needs sufficiently specific notice of the nature and extent of that evidence to allow President Trump or the court to distinguish between personal and official acts. They cited a recent court order in a federal civil case. This order stated that it was necessary to give President Trump every opportunity to present a presidential immunity defense. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban revealed on March 10th that President Donald Trump would accelerate the end of the war in Ukraine. President Trump received Orban at his Mar-a-Lago estate last weekend. The meeting lasted nearly an hour before the two had dinner and attended a concert. Orban said in an interview with Hungarian broadcaster M1, he, meaning Trump, has a very clear vision. He says the following, first, he will not give a single penny for the Russo-Ukrainian war. That's why the war will end, because it's obvious that Ukraine cannot stand on its own two feet. Orban also said that President Trump had a detailed plan to end the Russian-Ukraine war, but Orban did not elaborate. But at least one thing is certain, President Trump won't fund Ukraine. Orban said it was another matter how the war would be closed with peace talks after a truce and how a stable and safe Europe would be created. He said, but first peace must be achieved and he, meaning Trump, has the means for that. If the Americans don't give money and weapons along with the Europeans, the war will end. And if the Americans don't give money, then the Europeans won't be able to fund this war alone and then the war will end. Orban has publicly endorsed longtime ally President Trump for this year's election. As the country's Prime Minister, Orban only met with President Trump during his visit to the United States, but he did not meet with incumbent U.S. President Biden. Responding to a question from an M1 TV reporter about how he feels about incumbent President Biden's possible re-election, Orban said it would be bad if that were to happen. As a Putin ally, Orban was not only not negatively affected in the Hungarian elections for being a Putin ally, but Orban also won as the protector of Hungary. Orban's campaign coalition won the 2022 parliamentary elections. This is his fourth term as prime minister of Hungary. According to officials in South Carolina, John Barnett, a whistleblower who had been involved in a lawsuit against Boeing, died of an apparent suicide. The Charleston County Coroner's Office stated that the 62-year-old was found dead from what appears to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. While the Charleston City Police Department is investigating the incident, the coroner did not release additional details surrounding Barnett's death. Barnett, who served at Boeing for over 30 years until 2017, was a vocal critic of the company's safety and quality practices. He was a key witness in a whistleblower lawsuit against Boeing at the time of his death. In this lawsuit, he claimed that Boeing retaliated against him for repeatedly reporting defects. His body was discovered in a vehicle on the same day that he was scheduled to appear in court. Boeing expressed its condolences, stating, We are saddened by Mr. Barnett's passing, and our thoughts are with his family and friends. However, Boeing did not comment on the allegations that were made by Barnett. Barnett was a safety checker overseeing aircraft production. In a recent live-streamed interview, Barnett raised concerns about Boeing's quality control issues. These issues were specifically within the 737 and 787 aircraft programs. Barnett claimed that removing inspection operations from jobs led to defects and safety problems. Barnett pointed to a recent high-profile incident involving a door plug blowout on an Alaska airline flight. He asserted 
that this may not be an isolated occurrence and that the entire airplane could have quality control issues. Barnett said, this is not a 737 problem, it's a Boeing problem. The door plugs blew out of the Alaska Airline Boeing 737 MAX 9 while in mid-air. On January 5th, the incident forced an emergency landing. This led to the temporary grounding of such aircraft and to intense federal regulator scrutiny. According to a report by the National Transportation Safety Board, the panel that was covering an unused door came off during the flight. This is because four bolts that were supposed to hold it in place were missing. Boeing admitted in mid-January that its 737 MAX production quality wasn't up to standard and as a result Boeing ousted Ed Clark who headed the 737 MAX program. The company said that the ousting came as part of an increased safety focus. The incident led the Federal Aviation Administration to ground all 737 MAX 9s and it led to them ordering enhanced inspections on the planes. They also investigated Boeing to see if the company failed to ensure proper production safety standards. Boeing stated in January that it cooperated fully with the probe. However, Barnett said his concerns were more serious than the door plug blowout. Barnett explained his concerns to the overall condition of Boeing airplanes owing to the elimination of inspection operations. Barnett alleged that Boeing had removed these operations, leaving mechanics to handle their own work, resulting in incomplete and improperly inspected jobs. Barnett said during the interview, My concerns are with the 737 and 787, because those programs have really embraced the theory that quality is overhead and non-value added. So those two programs have really put a strong effort into removing quality from the process. Barnett also described an experience in 2012 when he claimed to have identified roughly 300 defects at a supplier. The supplier is called Spirit Aero Systems. Later, Barnett discovered that inspectors who were sent after him were given limited time and they were lauded for finding fewer problems. According to Barnett, this raised questions about Boeing's quality control procedures. As investigations continue into Barnett's death, the aviation industry and federal authorities have ramped up scrutiny of Boeing. Earlier this month, the Federal Aviation Administration said that its audit of Boeing found multiple instances where the company allegedly failed to comply with manufacturing quality control requirements. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg has said Boeing is under rigorous scrutiny. And that's a wrap for this episode. Thank you so much for your support of Front Page. Please remember that every like, comment, and share helps more people to see the truth. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you have already subscribed, we thank you, but please double check to make sure that you're still subscribed because some of our audience have reported that they're somehow unsubscribed without their knowledge. We've also heard that many of you don't get notifications of our videos anymore on YouTube. So when you do subscribe on YouTube, please make sure to tap the notification bell as well. Okay, this is our show for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like what you heard today, please don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends and family because everybody deserves to know the truth. Again, thank you for watching Front Page and we will see you next time.